good afternoon everyone uh, last class i talked about uh, synaptogenesis mechanism of synaptogenesis today i am going to uh, continue with the same so here uh, we just want to revise what we have talked uh, last classes um, last class so so here uh, just showing that uh, different steps of synaptogenesis um so here uh, this is for the time being just remember that this is um, uh, presynaptic uh, exon terminal this is postsynaptic uh, compartment the postsynaptic dendrite um okay so what happens is uh, i i you know, in in previous uh, lecture i talked about some of the, some of my previous lecture uh, talked about the growth cone um, formation and growth cone guidance so the growth cone um, um, you have formation of philopodia like like projection um, at the tip of the growth cone okay so what happens is uh, you have formation of dendritic like philopodia on the postsynaptic you know, cells uh, which comes in contact with the nascent presynaptic um, zones the nascent nascent um, presynaptic you know terminal so first you, you know, your postsynapse the dendrite comes in contact to the nascent presynaptic um, exon terminal then you have the matching of cell membrane receptor which triggers synaptogenesis. So you have uh, uh, the cell adhesion. So you have the cell adhesion molecule plays an important role, which uh, you know may contact to the presynaptic cells. Okay. Then the second step is the activation of a scaffolding protein in the post postsynaptic uh, compartment, and uh, which helps in the clustering of uh, you know early receptor, uh, for example, acetylcholine receptor. So the scaffolding protein are PSD95 proteins. You have uh, PDZ containing proteins. The third step is you know, you know spine formation and signaling activation of signaling components. So uh, because of uh, you know um, because of this contact, you have uh, receptor clustering. You know the acetylcholine receptor clustering at the postsynaptic compartment. And the fourth step is uh, receptor subunit switch and spine maturation. Okay, and also, you know, before that, uh, no, before that, you have initiation of, uh, you know, activation of the presynaptic active zone components. So here, uh, presynaptic vesicles and release machinery assemble in the presynaptic cell, and um, then after that, you have this, uh, you know, um, receptor subunit switch. So receptor subunit switch means. You have, uh, you know, for, if, if I take example of glutamate receptor, there are two different types of glutamate receptor present in fly drosophila neuromuscular junction. One is A-type glutamate receptor and another is B-type glutamate receptor. So A-type glutamate receptor contains glutamate receptor A, C, D, E and B-type contains B, C, D, E. So, uh, so here uh, you have clustering of these different types of glutamate receptor in the postsynaptic cell, the postsynaptic dendrite. For example, then after that, uh, your spine is matured and you have uh, formation of a new synapse. So four basic steps. One is cell adhesions. Second step is scaffolding and uh, scaffolding of uh, receptor and clustering of the receptor. Third step is the activation of a signaling components and spine formation. And fourth step is the spine maturation. Okay. So, so we, 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 uh, uh, so these are basic steps of uh, synaptogenesis. So here uh, I'm showing that uh, the same thing that I have talked about um, from the previous slides. So this is a exon and these are the exon terminal. And this is a postsynaptic cell, the postsynaptic dendrite. Okay, so making contact with the presynaptic compartments. So first you have adhes cell adhesion, um, you know, um, you have the activation of cell adhesion molecule uh, where you have, uh, you know, they come in contact forming a synapse. And this thing happens because, you know, because of activity of the actin cytoskeleton. So he, here you have, uh, you know, actin and microtubule based cytoskeleton. So here in the exon terminal, you have the cytoskeleton, which helps in movement of this exon terminal towards the you know towards the postsynaptic dendrite in the postsynaptic dendrite you have also the cytoskeleton which come which helps in you know making contact to the you know exon terminals and uh, obviously you have the cell adhesion molecule which helps in you know matching of this pre and postsynaptic membrane okay so and this uh, motility that you see either uh, you know the presynaptic exon terminal or mostly the postsynaptic 
um, terminal, postsynaptic membrane. Okay, so they they no they, they approach each other because of the activity of actin-based cytoskeletons. So um, and most of the you know, 80 percent of excitatory synapses are present mostly in the postsynaptic dendrite. Okay. So that is what uh, is shown in the slide. So here, uh, so this is the hippocampal, hippocampal CA1 pyramidal neuron uh, transpected with leg uh, LCK GFP. Okay, so here to show that, so the green color that you are seeing, these are, uh, you know, these are the um, axons and having this postsynaptic, uh, these, these are the basically the postsynaptic dendrites. You can see these are the, this, this, this is the dendrite and here you can see that uh, the dendrites I know dendritic spine coming out from the postsynaptic um, dendrites, and you the formation of this postsynaptic dendrite dendritic spine depends uh, you know because of the activity of you know it happens because of the activity of actin um, um, actin cytoskeletons. So first you have formes, formation of protrusion like structure from the dendrites, and these are called as philopodia, and philopodia you know transition to the proto protospines. Which you have, uh, you know, mom, which which you have generation of this postsynaptic density and uh, clustering of the receptor. Okay, so then the protospine develops into mature spine. Okay, so that is how you have formation of uh, philopodia. Um, then um, here we are going to talk about, uh, you know, uh, as I mentioned from the very beginning of my slide, that you the uh, postsynapse approaching to the presynapse and uh, you have uh, you know activation of a cell adhesion molecule or, or you have you know cell adhesion molecule which basically helps in you know recognizing the presyn and postsynaptic membrane making a contact so the so these adhes adhesive factors are mostly catherins and uh, protocatherins so here this is a structure showing uh, platonic representation showing presynaptic cells and uh, this is a postsynaptic membrane uh, or postsynaptic cells um, for example the postsynaptic dendrite here you can see that the presynapse and postsynapse um, when after they come in contact they you know be, they form the synapse and this is and the forming of the synapse uh, happens because of the cell adhesion molecule which you are seeing here mostly belongs to catherin and protocatherins and this is a presynaptic uh, cell having the presyn presynaptic vesicles. Um, so this is, these are the vesicle containing um, neurotransmitter. Okay. So the now we um, in addition to the cell adhesion molecules, I want to highlight some of these inductive factor required for the synaptogenesis. So here uh, some of these inductor fa inductive factor which are mentioned here. You have seen cam. You have afferent B or efferin BR um, receptor, you have a neuro, neurexin. The presynaptic cell has a neurexin and a postsynaptic dendrite has a neuroligin, um, neurogluin, uh, neuro, uh, neurigulin. Then you have the cytoskeleton components, uh, which actually helps in uh, specializing the active zones. And uh, you have the postsynaptic uh, proteins, the postsynaptic uh, density proteins. Uh, so here, this is a snapshot of showing the release machinery. So uh, from the pre, pre synapse and the, from the post synapse. So here, uh, this is the active zone. Um, I was talking about where the synaptic vesicle fuse and release its content. Those specific electron dense structure are called as active zones. Okay, the active zones you can see that's loaded with the synaptic vesicle containing neurotransmitter. And the post synapse, you have this post synaptic um, you know, receptor uh, which actually binds to this uh, neurotransmitter. So in addition to that. Um, you, you know, um, the cell adhesion molecules helps in making the synapse, and you have the inductive factor. Where I'm going to talk about some of these inductive factor. Um, the latter of my talk, uh, that is neuroligin and a new, uh, you know, neurexin. How this is important for making synapse, you know, for making the proper synapse. Okay, so we are going to talk about this thing in the coming slide. Here again, showing the snapshot in a very uh, detailed structure, uh, the, the the release machinery. At the CNF synapse. Here, this is the presynaptic um, neuron, and this is the postsynaptic dendrite. And this in between, you have the synaptic cleft. So, um, and here I want to highlight some of the important proteins that is present in the presynapse and postsynapse required for synaptogenesis. So, let us talk about the presynaptic. What are our proteins present in the pre in the presynapse? Okay. So, this is a presynaptic cells. 
and you can see that uh, the micro tubules they you know by, you know they helps in you know trafficking of this uh, uh, synaptic vesicle the neurotransmitter containing synaptic vesicle to the presynaptic active zone so this is the presynaptic active zone and you have other proteins also in the presynaptic membrane which helps in fusion of the synaptic vesicles you have clustering of the calcium voltage gated calcium channel calcium channel okay and these are the synaptic vesicle binding proteins so i am going to highlight what are the synaptic vesicle binding protein it helps in fusion of synaptic vesicle to the presynaptic active zone okay so i am going to talk about some of these so what happens so why the calcium channel is important um and what is the role of calcium here for the synaptic vesicle fusion uh, when the axon when you stimulate the nerve what happens is you have generation of the axon potential and uh, because of the generation of actin poten potentials you know the calcium voltage gated calcium channel become active they influx calcium to the presynaptic cell of the presynaptic neuron and you have this calcium sensing uh, you know sensors are present in the presynaptic vesicle which is synaptotagmin 1 and synaptotagmin 2 and they sense the calcium concentration in the in, in the presynaptic cell and helps in fusion of the synaptic vesicle to the presynaptic active zone so i'll going to talk about you know what are the proteins present in the synaptic vesicles um in very you know um, so little little later little later of my presentation in addition to this protein presynaptic you know cell or presynaptic neuron contain other protein which helps in adhesion which helps in making contact to the postsynaptic dendrite who, who, so here the important protein is neurexin okay neurexin also you have neuregulin which is also helps in is an inductive factor required for the synaptogenesis so in the postsynaptic cell you have other proteins which which helps in contact the presynapse so you, you have neuroligin in the you know, postsynaptic cells you have a receptor uh, either it is an mda type glutamate receptor or ampa type glutamate receptor present in um, postsynaptic uh, you know dendrite these are excitatory in addition to the, that you have postsynaptic density proteins like psd95 or pdz containing protein those protein helps in clustering of glutamate receptor you know either an mda type glutamate receptor or ampa type glutamate receptor to the postsynaptic you know cell or postsynaptic um, membrane okay so this is uh, just showing that how complex this process uh, you know the pre and postsynaptic how they come in contact and how um, they helps in uh, you know for the efficient neurotransmission okay so um so 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 we are, we are going to talk about um you know the same thing that i talked about um, from my previous slides the steps of uh, synaptogenesis and here i am going to talk about emphasize emphasize the timeline for synaptogenesis so here these are the different steps of synaptogenesis first what happens is you have uh, initial contact and initial contact uh, uh, happens because of expression of cell adhesion molecules or inductive factors so how, where the cell adhesion molecules are synthesized they are synthesized either in the presynaptic um, cells you have uh, for example you require you know catherins or you require uh, neurexin neuroligin for the um, cell adhesions so for example here uh, the you know the cell adhesion molecules um, are synthesized from the golgi body and they are traffic uh, to the presynaptic um, membrane here you can see that these are present in the presynaptic membrane these are cell, ad um, ad um, cell adhesion molecules these are adhesive molecules similarly the presynaptic cell also synthesize the adhesive molecules so the first step is the you know initial contact where you have increased adhesion um, between the presynaptic cell and postsynaptic cell and the second step is the assembly of synaptic machinery so the synaptic machinery contains in the presynaptic cell contains synaptic vesicles and accumulation of uh, active zone component proteins so then you have uh, no this is the second step the assembly of synaptic machinery and the star third step is the stabilization of synapse and the st stabilization of synapse happens because of activity of psd95 the p post synaptic density protein or you have a pdz containing protein which clusters the glutamate receptor or the glutamate you know, NMDA type glutamate receptor, or AMPA type glutamate receptor, or acetylcholine uh, receptor in the postsynaptic uh, you know, you know, post cells. 
and now in the presynaptic cell you have uh, you know the vesicle containing neurotransmitter fused to the fused to the active zone and it releases its content and those uh, neurotransmitter bind to the postsynaptic uh, receptor and, uh, and initiates the downstream downstream signaling process so after fusion of the synaptic vesicles um you have recycling of this membrane because if the synaptic vesicle fuses continuously to the presynaptic membrane the membrane will grow you know mem membrane will grow like anything so this needs to be retrieved that's why you have endocytosis to maintain this presynaptic membrane so you have three different steps you have uh, initial contact you have assembly of synaptic machinery then you have stabilization of the synapse okay so these are the steps of uh, synaptogenesis so I'm, i'm going to talk about some the timeline for the synaptogenesis and here the same thing i am representing here just uh, want to highlight that in the latter stage of this uh, you know you know of the development of the synapse um, uh, during the stabilization stage you have uh, activation of pdz containing protein uh, that actually helps in clustering of this uh, you know stabilizing the um, the postsynaptic uh, receptors required for the you know efficient neurotransmission okay so so here i am showing a um, very complex uh, you know slide showing that what are different proteins uh, present in the presynapse and postsynapse so here uh, these are the some of the active zone containing protein active zone um, you know um, proteins that forms the active zone or the release machinery at the presynaptic compartment so you have the colo protein bosun protein these are the active zone components protein you have ring binding proteins you have cast elks uh, it is called drp the bruce pollutant in drosophila you have mung 13 you have mung 18s okay and then uh, you know you can see that the synaptic vesicle has b snare um, then you have t snare coming in contact from the presynaptic membrane the vesicle fuses and releases its neurotransmitter to the synaptic cleft and then after that the vesicle is recycled um through endocytosis so there are a lot of proteins you know that makes this presynaptic um, active zone similarly in the postsynapse you have the postsynaptic receptor ampa receptor or uh, um, you know if it is an nmda type glutamate receptor you have an nmda type glutamate receptor then you know for stabilizing this receptor you have the postsynaptic uh, then um, density proteins um the prd containing protein the psd95 postsynaptic density protein you have the spectrin cytoskeleton now you have the neuroligin um, and the neurexin from the presynapse and that makes the initial contact you have the expression of cell adhesion molecules then you have uh, you know actin based cytoskeleton also you know organizes this receptor so this is how you know uh, you know the release machinery in the pre and post synaptic compartment uh, looks like uh, so we are going to talk up more about this so then the next question arises and then how this presynaptic compartment presynap no no the cell the, the presynaptic compartment containing these different you know components for the active zone um, proteins are assembled whether these are prefabricated or made before it's just transported to the you know exon terminal or they are synthesized individually like here you have kinase in that uh, you know motor protein um, which Uh, and then you have the synaptic vesicles you have the calcium voltage gated calcium channel low density synaptic vesicles you have coating proteins you have docking and fusion machinery this is the active zones so oh, the old school model thought that individual synaptic components are assembled entirely at new contacts so they are synthesized individually and they transported to the you know exon terminal and here they assemble to form the presynaptic active zone release machinery actually okay But however because of improvement of our technique mostly the imaging technique live cell imaging approach it has been shown that those components for the presynaptic release machinery are pre, are, are you know made before they are prefabricated so they are not formed individually here uh, individually here and uh, transported to the terminals and they are they assembled it's not like that and the latter they found that by you know live imaging they found that they are prefabricated and that transported to the exon terminal through the exon of motor protein the kinase in and here you have uh, you know formation of the you know formation of uh, active zone release machinery okay so that is the new school model thought um so so we are going to talk about uh, some of these um some of these in the coming slide 
then uh, you know that will be helpful for, to understand so so here just want to show uh, as i very beginning of my lecture i mentioned about the presynaptic vesicles the synaptic vesicles and i mentioned that there are a lot of protein associated with synaptic vesicles which helps in fusion of uh, you know synaptic vesicle to the presynaptic active zone so this is a cartoon showing uh, synaptic vesicle and different protein associated with the synaptic vesicles so you have synaptotagmin 1 and 2 i i mentioned that you know they have this calcium sensing domain uh, when you have uh, opening of the voltage gated calcium channel you have influx of calcium to the presynaptic cell and these synaptotagmin 1 and synaptotagmin 2 in the presynaptic you know synaptic vesicles sense this calcium okay this helps in the fusion to the presynaptic this this the, the sensing helps in fusion of this synaptic vesicle to the presynaptic active zone. So you, you have synaptotagmin 1 and 2, you have synaptobrevin 1 and 2, you have synapsin 1, 2, 3, you have CSP, 16 string protein, you have RAP3, you have synaptogyrin, synaptophysin 1 and 2. So these are the protein um, present in this vesicle membrane. Okay. So these are the protein present in the vesicle membrane. So here, uh, you know, uh, you can label any of these protein uh, so that you can track the synaptic vesicles. So for uh, you know, here, and they have labeled synaptobrevin brevin with synaptobrevin GFP. So 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 that the synaptic vesicle will will be you know seen in as green. So here you can see that you know at a different by using the time lapse imaging this in this they see the you know movement of synaptic vesicles um in the neuron. So here you can see that at T zero the synaptic vesicle is here. But as the time progress, you can see that they can uh, really track this, you know, synaptic vesicle. So, so you can, you know, by using this technique of live cell imaging approach and uh, by tagging this, some of this protein in synaptic vesicle, you can actually study the dynamics of synaptic vesicle in the neuron. Okay. So here, uh, so in addition to that, by tagging the, you know, protein associated with the synaptic vesicle, you can measure the dynamics. Along with that, there are some dyes uh, which are developed um, in you know later uh, in the latter stage to understand the dynamic of synaptic vesicle. These are uh, you know FM dyes. So there are various version of FM dyes. So here this is FM four sixty four dye. So it's a red color dye. So uh, so you have either different colors of FM dyes. You have green color. You have red color. So here, uh, you know, the synaptic vesicle tagged with synaptobrevin GFP so that you can see this is green. Now, um, you know, since you have this, um, since you have the dye, if you incubate this dye to this preparation, it will also level synaptic vesicles. So because uh, these are lipophilic dye, FM dyes, the synaptic vesicle is lip, you know, consists of mostly the lipid bilayer. So it can bind to the lipids of synaptic vesicle. So here you can see that in the yellow things that uh, you have the red and green co-localized together. That's become yellow. So here the green because you, green uh, of the synaptic vesicle because you have synaptobrevin GFP uh, express, uh, expressed. That's why the synaptic vesicle is labeled as green. Since we have used this FM464 dye, um, you can also label synaptic vesicle. That's why you know they co-localize and they become yellow so that means the, it's just want to highlight that fm 464 dyes or fm dyes are used to level the synaptic vesicles okay so the next thing is uh, want to highlight uh, you know the timeline for the uh, differentiation like the formation of synapto uh, from formation of this contact or or the timeline for synaptogenesis first what happens is you have uh, Presynaptic differentiation. Then after that, you have postsynaptic differentiation. So here, this is the timeline, and this is the time in minutes. So first, what happens is you have exodendritic contact. The dendrite come in comes in contact to the exon. So it's um, like uh, zero minutes. Okay. Then you have uh, you know the protein presynaptic protein, the boson protein is recruited to the presynaptic site. That takes around um, thirty minutes. Then here, then you have formation of functional presynaptic active zone around forty minutes. Then accumulation of presynaptic vesicles, uh, vesicle containing neurotransmitter is around 55 minutes. This is the presynaptic differentiation. Now you have uh, postsynaptic differentiation. So you have uh, accumulation of uh, PDZ or PhD95 at the postsynaptic dendrite. It takes around uh, you know, uh, 70 to 110 minutes. 
and you have a clustering of glutamate receptors. So these two process uh, basically overlap. So it's uh, starting at the 80 minutes, 200, um, maybe five minutes. So so these are the steps uh, and the timelines. So to form a functional synapse, uh, mature synapse, it takes around 110 minutes of uh, different steps like contact, expression of uh, presynaptic uh, protein boson, then the formation of uh, functional presynaptic active zone, you have accumulation of uh, presynaptic vesicles, then you have expression of uh, PSD95, accumulating the postsynaptic dendrite, then uh, which helps in clustering of glutamate receptor. So 110 minutes um, timeline. So since I have um, in the in my coming slides, I'll be talking about labeling of synaptic vesicles with dyes. So here I want to highlight the chemistry of uh, FM143 dye. So here we are going to talk about FM143 dye optic experiment. So, so here what you can do is you can incubate, you can take this, you know, cultured neurons and you incubate with FM143 dyes. Okay, so here you incubate. So these are lipophilic dye. So they bind to the presynaptic membrane. Okay, here you can see that they bind to the presynaptic membrane. After that, you stimulate this, then you, after, you know, incubating maybe for two minutes or so, you wash this, you know, preparation so that the unbound dyes will be removed from this, you know, neurons or the presynaptic membrane. Now you stimulate, now you stimulate uh, the neurons. Um, so when you stimulate the neuron, uh, what happens is you have opening of voltage gated calcium channel, which allows influx of presynaptic, you know, you know, which allows influx of calcium to the presynaptic membrane. Now the presynaptic membrane, um, you know, in, helps in you know influx of calcium to the presynaptic um, cells. So now you have calcium sensing sensing synaptotagmin present in the presynaptic vesicle. I have talked about in very um, beginning of my talk, and this helps in fusion of you know synaptic vesicle to the presynaptic membrane. Okay, presynaptic membrane. Okay. So after fusion, it releases content. So if you see the continuous fusion of this, you know, synaptic vesicle to the presynaptic membrane, the presynaptic membrane will grow like anything. It will grow. So, and you know, these growing membrane are you know so so but but in you know realistically, you do not see the growing of the membrane because synaptic vesicle fuse because these are membrane structure and you have the presynaptic membrane here when it will fuse. You have addition of this, you know, mem you have addition of this, you know, mem you know, lipids and other components to the membrane. So the membrane will grow, but it doesn't grow like that. And what happens is these growing membrane or, or these, these, uh, you know, are retrieved by endocytosis. So when you stimulate the synaptic vesicle fuse and uh, you know, it is added to the membrane, now this membrane is retrieved back because of endocytosis. You can see that membrane is invaginated here. Now it is endocytos. Uh, it will form a vesicle-like structure. So here you can see that uh, the vesicles are, are formed because of endocytosis. And, and uh, during formation of this vesicle, you have insertion of this, you know, the dye which are bound to this membrane are also coming to the vesicles. So, so who, then after that, what happens is when these dyes remain inside the vesicle, they become fluorescent because the um, vesicle inside the vesicle is, you know, acidic environment here you can see that you can see this you know fluorescence in these uh, vesicles because the dye is inside the vesicles so this is how you can level this you know synaptic vesicle by using fm143 dye okay so they are less fluorescence when they are outside the solution um, so you do not see such fluorescence here when they are bound to the membrane but when once it become endocytose it comes in into the vesicle inside the vesicles uh, and it become fluorescence. So here you can see that this is the preparation. I know, you know, you can see that, uh, you know, the vesicles are uh, labeled as green. Okay. So here, um, you know, I want to show that uh, how the FM143 dyes are used to label the synaptic vesicles. So here the experiment, uh, you know, this is the experiment they have done. So here, this is zero minute. They have incubated the FM143 dye to this preparation here you can see that this is labeling you know very less you know time you, you can see that is labeling the vesicles but these are the vesicles which are not labeled here one this is this is the region in the arrowhead you can see that you do not see such labeling of this you know vesicle present in this region also here also here but after one minute 25 seconds uh, you can see that 
some of the structure arises in these regions, which are not there before. So you can see that labeling of synaptic vesicles. So what people do, first they incubate the dye for certain amount of time, like maybe two minutes. After that, they unload the dye, they wash it. Okay, so they wash it. So here, they, they, after zero minutes, they wash it. You, you can see that you do not see binding, non-specific binding of the you know, FM dyes. And here uh, in this region, here you can see that you do not see signal in this region. Okay. So here you can, this, this is called as dye on load. Um, after zero minute, you wash it, you incubate and wash it. Okay. So you do not see such uh, you know, signal here, uh, which is, um, you know, the arrowhead you can see. But after one, one minute, 25 seconds, Okay, you can see the signals. Okay, so uh, then you wash it. Okay, when you wash, you remove this non-specific, uh, non-specific uh, binding that is called as dye on load. But uh, in the merge image, you can see that you know. So this have, you, you can see the synaptic vesicle after you stimulate the vibration. So first, what you do, um, just want to make it clear. First, you load the dye. Okay, then incubate for a certain time. Then stimulate the preparation then then you wash it that means you unload the dye wash it means you your non-specific dye the non-specific you know, binding of the dye will be removed by, because of washing okay after washing that is called as dye unloading after was washing you stimulate the preparation when you stimulate the preparation you see such you know because you have endocytosis of synaptic vesicle now the dye is inside the vesicle because of endocytosis and because of stimulation you see source structure uh, you know fluorescence here okay which is also you can see that these are the structure uh, which appear after uh, you know stimulation of this nerve and you do not see such structure such fluorescence uh, in a zero minute you can see that here after 1 minute 25 second you see um, um this labeling of the synaptic vesicle but you do not see in zero minute okay so here the same thing showing like uh, you know, presynaptic differentiation, proceeds postsynaptic differentiation. This is the timeline. Okay, so so the dye can be used to label synaptic vesicles. So first, you have to incubate the preparation with the dye, and then you have to wait for certain time. Uh, when you wait for certain time, and that time, you know, you have binding of dye to the presynaptic membrane. Then you unload the dye by washing it. Okay, then you stimulate the preparation. When you stimulate the preparation, you have endo, you have a, you know generation of action potential. Then you have fusion of synaptic vesicle. You have opening of presynaptic calcium channel, which allows fusion of synaptic vesicle to the presynaptic membrane. Now because now the synapse is maintained or the synaptic membrane, presynaptic membrane is maintained because of endocytosis. So you see endocytosis, and then after that, because of endocytosis, the dyes which are present in the presynaptic membrane will comes inside the vesicle. Inside the vesicle is acidic environment, which helps in fluorescence of the, um, you know, dye. So, you know, you can see that, I know the fluorescence that you are seeing because uh, of endocytosis, because you stimulate the vibration. Okay. You do not see such thing in the one, you know, zero, zero minute. Okay. But you see after one, one minute, 25 seconds, because you stimulate the vibration, you, you have the endocytosis. Okay. Now here, uh, just one to so different thing, um, um, you know, important proteins um, to say that, uh, you know, um, mostly, you know, to say that how other proteins play an important role in the synapse formation. So here I want to talk about uh, some something about activity dependency in synapse formation and activity independent synapse formation. So I want to highlight what is called as activity dependent and activity independent synapse formation and how it is required for the brain development. Okay, we know that when we, you know, suppose you are giving certain task to the mouse, the mouse, it has been seen that, you know, the mouse learn those tasks, task, and those, um, you know, the mouse which are trained properly, they have more dendritic spine. They have more, you know, they learn more, you know, they learn certain things and they generate the dendritic, more dendritic spine. That is called as activity dependent, uh, you know, um, synapse formation. So you have more dendritic spine, you have more synapse formation. But in some cases, it has been seen that, you know, you have, uh, you know, activity independent synapse formation. Mostly initial synapse formation is largely activity independent. For example, I'll be talking about the MOOC 18 protein, which is required for the synapse, you know, active zone organization. 
So here it has been seen that this is a control mouse where you have intact MUNC 18. This is a null uh, mouse for MUNC 18, a knockout for MUNC 18. Uh, it is a protein critical for neurotransmitter release. So when you knock out this MUNC 18, and you can see that you do not see alteration of brain structure. That means you do not see any problem in the brain development. Uh, normal synapse is formed. I know development of normal synapse, synapse is formed, but here, you know, MUNC 18 is an important protein for neurotransmitter release. One will expect that you have a loss of synapse formation. I know you here in this case, they found that, you know, you do not see such a problem in synapse formation. So this is an activity independent synapse formation. Previously, I was talking about activity dependent, where you give certain tasks, you have more generation of dendritic spine. So that, that is called as activity dependent synapse formation. So here, the MUNC-18 protein, you know, in, you know, knockout of MUNC-18 protein, you do not see such alteration in the brain structure. That is an activity independent. You still have synapse formation. You can see that in the control, you have the you know postsynaptic density. You have the you know uh, you know the active zone, which is the electron dense structure. And in the knockout mice, uh, you know you can see that you still have the formation of vesicle. You have the active zones. You have the postsynaptic density. So they become normal. So uh, so that is how that is that that is called as activity independent synapse formation. So um, uh, you know uh, that is what that's why I want to highlight. Uh, what are those, uh, you know, activity independent. So initial synapse formation is largely activity independent because the MUNC-18, you know, helps in organization of the presynaptic active zone. So this is very, uh, happens at the very beginning stage of the synapse formation. So initial synapse formation is largely activity independent. So we'll continue to talk about some of these, uh, you know, cell, you know, adhesion molecules that I mentioned very beginning of my slide. So uh, these are the, protein required for the formation of synapse the catherine the protocatherins here it is highlighted in the in the red so catherine and protocatherins they comes in contact together um, and they, these are the crucial molecules helps in initial recognition steps so we'll talk more about these catherines okay so here uh, showing that uh, various uh, uh, showing the catherine molecules uh, important for the initial contact so the cell adhesion molecules so is defined by their adhesive domains. So the, they are belongs to immunoglobulin family or catherin superfamily, or uh, having the leucine zipper repeat. Um, so uh, can the cell adhesion molecules are often interact with the pre or post synaptic scaffold in protein. So here uh, you can see that uh, this is a cell adhesion molecule, L1 cell adhesion molecules. You have NC cam. Um, you know you have. Uh, you know, other inductive factor like neurolegin, neurexin, um, beta neurexin, um, and neurolegin one. So these are the cell adhesion molecules. So these, uh, you know, just want to show how different uh, inductive factor and the cell adhesion molecules helps in initial recognition of the synapse. So the first, when the synapse, post-synaptic the post -synaptic dendrite comes in contact with the presynaptic membrane, those cell adhesion molecules uh, recognize this membrane and forms and establish initial contact, okay? And here, uh, you know, showing that different scaffolding proteins like PSD95, PDZ containing protein, they regulate, uh, you know, you know, expression of cell adhesion molecule along with the glutamate, you know, AMPA type or NMD type glutamate receptor, okay? So we'll talk more about this. So here, um, just want to highlight uh, um, the cell adhesion molecules how they interact with the presynaptic, uh, you know, active uh, presynaptic membrane. So here, uh, um, showing different types of cell adhesion molecules. This is the cadherins. This is the Ig family, immunoglobulin family like adhesion molecules. And you have another cell adhesion mo mo molecule that is selecting. So cadherins or Ig like uh, immunoglobulin like cell adhesion molecules, they interact with each other through homophilic interaction. You can see that uh, these two structures that you are seeing. From the presynaptic cell or from the postsynaptic dendrite, they are similar. So they mediate homophilic interaction. However, the you know the cell adhesion molecules can also interact uh, with each other uh, through heterophilic interaction. You know heterophilic interaction. So here in the presynaptic membrane you have benzene like structure, and the postsynaptic you have uh, this structure. So they interact. They are not similar. They they mediate hetero you know philic binding. Um, they mediate, mediate heterophilic interaction, okay. So here the cell adhesion molecule has uh, different uh, domains. So he, here this is the cytoplasmic domain. So this side um, faces to the cytoplasmic, facing to the cytoplasmic, cytoplasmic side. 
and this is the transmembrane domain and this is the extracellular domain okay so similarly in the, in the postsynaptic cell you have the cytoplasmic domain you have the transmembrane domain and you have the extracellular domain okay so we are going to talk about uh, more about cell adhesion molecules so here uh, um, showing that uh, how cell adhesion molecule plays an important role in synapse formation basically they recognize the synapse they stabilize the synapse that is called a synapse stability see and then so here uh, cell, cell adhesion molecules um, which is shown here they stabilize the synapse and then that is called a synapse stability then after the synapse becomes stable uh, you have expression of neuro neurotransmitter receptor uh, in the postsynaptic dendrite you can see you have expression of you know neurotransmitter receptor then post presynapse comes in contact with the postsynapse and uh, the cytoskeleton that you are seeing here in the postsynaptic compartment along with the pdz containing protein or phd95 it helps in the clustering of the receptor and that you are seeing here neurotransmitter receptor so this is called as maturation stage so first uh, stabilized um, stability of the synapse because of expression of uh, initial because of expression of cell adhesion molecules and you have initial contact stability then specificity you have a clustering of neurotransmitter receptor that is done by the cytoskeleton underlying cytoskeleton or uh, P phd95 or pdz containing protein and this is called as a maturation step and the last step is the generation of the presynaptic um, you know uh, release machinery like active zone generation of the synaptic vesicles and that is called as a plasticity okay so and this is this is how um, this is how the cell adhesion molecules plays an important role in synapse formation here i want to say something about synaptosome what is the difference between synaptosome and uh, exon terminals or postsynaptic dendrite so if you want to isolate this interaction like presynapse uh, and postsynaptic cell uh, as an intact structure you can uh, do that in the lab so what people do is they homogenize they homogenize this neuron so here uh, you can you break this neuron home you know homogenize the neuron so here you can see this is the exon terminal is broken here in the postsynaptic dendrite is broken here now you do send density gradient centrifugation so if you go for density gradient gradient centrifugation centrifugation you can isolate the structure so here the some of the structures are intact like and the presynaptic terminals and the postsynaptic dendrite they remain like this and this i you know you can uh, assay a lot of lot of you uh, know you can do a lot of assay by isolating this structure these are called a synaptosome synaptosome contain presynaptic exon terminal um part of the presynaptic exon terminal and also part of the postsynaptic dendrite so here this is called a synaptosome synaptosome means you know you have part of this presynaptic exon terminal and and postsynaptic dendrite and you still have synaptic vesicles and receptors and uh, you know cell adhesion molecules so this, this is you can uh, this is called a synaptosome okay then i i was talking about the catherines um which helps in initial contact between between uh, pre and post synaptic membrane so catherine is a multi domain containing protein as i mentioned earlier it is a cytoplasmic domain which exposes to the cytoplasm of either pre synaptic you know um, cell or, or in the post synaptic cell you have a transmembrane domain which span this membrane now you have a extracellular domain is the ec domain so here you have this is a you know five ec domain present in this catherine uh, EC1, EC2, EC3, EC4, and EC5. You have calcium binding motif. Okay, so this is uh, this extracellular domain actually interact with the, um, you know, the other, uh, you know, interact with this, um, the uh, other extracellular domain um, from this postsynaptic, you know, dendrites. So here, uh, just if I go back here, so here uh, this is extracellular domain. Okay. Um, of catherines which interacts this is this is the you know presynaptic membrane catherine and this is the postsynaptic membrane catherine um so you can see that they're doing the homophilic interaction so this extracellular domain basically interact that is one i want to highlight here okay and the calcium binding to the you know extracellular domain stiffens the ectodomain okay stiffen this domain so this this domain is required for the you know um homophilic interaction and uh, the cytoplasmic domain basically initiates intracellular signaling um, and a similar function in all catherines. So cytoplasmic domain initiates the intracellular signaling. Okay. So uh, here um, showing that uh, how the cytoplasmic domain initiates intracellular signaling 
so here this is a presynaptic membrane and this is the catherine in the presynaptic and this is the postsynaptic dendrite the catherine okay this is intracellular this is inside the cell this is also inside the cell this is the extracellular okay so when they come in contact and the presynaptic catherine the postsynaptic catherine they come in contact they initiates the downstream signaling uh, at its intracellular do domain basically here uh, uh, it it activates the beta catenin um signaling molecules so here you can see that uh, beta catenin signaling molecules is activated by the cytoplasmic domain now because of activation of beta uh, you know, alpha catenin uh, bit fast beta catenin then alpha catenin it helps in you know polymerization of the actin actin cytoskeleton so um, so this catherine actually activate cytoskeleton uh, to polymerize okay so initially what happens is if you if i look uh, you know uh, look that in bigger picture so this is a nascent synapse uh, nascent contact actually nascent nascent contact recently made you know the they just made this contact what happens is the you have this actin nucleator the r23 complex which is which nucleates the actin uh, which which polymerizes the g actin the granular actin to f actin so it forms like branch like structure when those things are formed what happens is because of uh, in uh, signaling cascade by this catherine and uh, the beta catenin actually you know helps in you know making the bundle of this branch actin to forms you know helps in further poly you know polymerization of this actin actin branches to form the bundles so here you can see that so first uh, initial step is uh, polymerization of the g actin to f actin it form the branches by r23 complex then when this uh, catherine become active and the beta catenin become active the beta because of activation of beta beta catenin this r23 complex they remain inactive now the branches are you know converted into bundles so because of the action of the catenin beta catenin alpha catenin okay so catherine signal to the cytoskeleton via alpha and beta catenins okay that is what so here uh, showing the same thing so here they have immuno um immuno immuno em analysis um, they have done the microscopy uh, to show the n catherines are cheek retinotactile synapse. So here you can see that uh, you know they have imaged this by EM gold labeling. Um, so here they showing the same thing like different uh, um, protein present in the presynapse and postsynapse. Presynapse uh, you have the catherine and postsynapse also you have the catherine. This helps in initial contact of the synapse. You have expression of other postsynaptic protein that is HOMO or protein, or I'll be talking about more of these PhD95 or uh, other PDZ containing protein helps in you know stabilization of the receptor or clustering of receptor. Okay, so this is called a synaptic, and uh, this now this is called an, uh, this is how the synapse is born or synapse is formed. Okay, so here um um showing the importance of the catherines and it has been shown that. A loss of catherine function can result in exon failing to stop at their appropriate target and overshooting. So here, um, just want to highlight the role of catherines um, in synaptic uh, exon pathfinding. That is what um, you know. Want to highlight. So we know that um, in the brain, you have in the cortex is a multi-layer structure. You have cortex layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five, and layer six. Okay. And we, 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 in from some of my earlier lecture, I talked about that there are projects, um, neuron project from one layer to other layer. So you have thalamo cortico projection. So neuron project from thalamus to cortex layer. Suppose, um, you know, thalamus to cortex layer uh, four. Okay. So here, uh, you know, uh, here the, you know, you are not perturbing the catherines. So you can see that you have normal projection from thalamic, uh, normal projection of thalamic exons. To the layer four, okay, layer four in the untreated one. But when you, you know, block this N catherine catherines by using the antibody or by knock, knocking out the catherine genes, you can see that the normal, you know, normally the neuron project from thalamus to, you know, from thalamus to the cortex layer four. That is how it is. You know, these are neurons are projecting. But when you block this catherine or you muted this catherine, you can see that. They are not able to recognize their targets. They grow like anything. You can see that they, you know, they are not projecting to the layer four here. They are projecting, you know, going beyond to the layer four. So you, you, you can see larger projections. So that is called as you no know, overshooting. So here, uh, so that means 
any dysfunction of catherine can result in uh, results in exon failing to stop at their appropriate target so here the exon is stopping at the appropriate target layer 4 but here it is not stopping it is going beyond the uh, layer 4 so this is called as exon overshooting so catherine can also help in synaptic targeting that is what i want to highlight so here uh, showing the more about catherine's so here i am talking about how catherine plays an important role in synapse formation here this is the control um, experiment this is the um, experiment where they have uh, deleted the n uh, ec domain of you know ec domain that i talked about you have five ec domain ec1 ec2 ec3 and ec4 these are the extracellular domains here this is they have truncated the ec domain in this experiment so here you can see here they have labeled uh, you know the postsynaptic dendrite this is this is the postsynaptic dendrite and the other dendritic spine in the green with actin in the green so postsynaptic dendrite is in the green and the presynaptic cell they have labeled with a marker called as synapsin synapsin is present in the presynaptic vesicle there are a lot of protein present in the presynaptic vesicle synapsin synaptobrevin synaptogyrin and uh, synaptotagmin so here they have used you know synap uh, synapsin to label the um, postsynaptic dendrite sorry presynaptic and to level the presynaptic um, you know uh, neuron synapse synapsin and the postsynaptic dendrite they have leveled with actin gfp so here you can see when they have intact um, n catherine you can see that you have green and red they are co-localized together green is synapsin and red uh, you know green is actin gfp uh, which is the part of the postsynaptic dendrite um and red is synapsin so here you can see the green postsynapse is co-localizing you know kind of opposed to the presynapse which is red you can see the yellow kind of structure here that means a new the, the, the synapse is you know formed but when you truncate this catherine and catherine you can see that you see you do not see such structure here the yellow like thing here more yellow like thing more apo you know you know opposed pre and post synaptic compartment that means in pre, pre and post synaptic compartments you have formation of the synapse but you have you do not see such yellow like thing here you do not have formation of synapse when you truncate this you know um the catherines okay the ec domain of the catherines or you know, you know another experiment they have seen that the interactor of this catherine uh you know the alpha and catenin so in this knockout mouse you can you do not see such yellow like structure here so here this is the control mouse here you uh, control mouse here you can see that the you know green is post synaptic dendrite and the red is the synapsin so you can see that you have larger synapsin functa that means uh so this is synapsin so you can that means you have formation of this synapse pre and post synapse but when you knock out uh, al uh, n catenin alpha n catenin which is an interactor of uh, this catherine you do not see such structure or very reduced synapsin expression you can see you have more synapsin expression that means a good contact you know pre and post synaptic contact but you do not see such yellow like structure here um, not clear that means you you know you have aberrant synapse formation um, which has fewer synapses so when you have these more yellow like things you have pro uh, proper uh, you know apposition of pre and post synapse you have proper synapse formation but who when you do not but when you see uh, which when you do not see such yellow like things you you can see that you have reduced synapse formations so catherine or its interactor regulates synapse formation okay so here uh, i will talk more about some of these inductive factor like like neurexin and neuroligins because neurexin is present in the presynaptic membrane and neuroligin is present in the postsynaptic membrane and they play an important role in synaptogenesis in the central nervous system okay so here uh, this is already i have talked about and uh, this uh, synaptic release machinery so here i i want to highlight uh, the importance of neurexin and the importance of uh, neuroligin this 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 structure of neuroligin and how you know they are important uh, during you know initial contact and formation of synapse okay so uh, there are uh, isoforms of uh, neurexin and neuroligins present in um, um, neurons so neurexin present in the presynaptic um, cells so there are two isoforms alpha and beta isoforms and uh, here um, this is the neurexin neurexin uh, protein and uh, you can see that 
sorry this is not neurexin this is the neurex neuroligin protein okay i'll talk about neuroligin and this is the neurexin protein okay so it is a multi domain protein here uh, the, the, it has a binding domain for a neuroligin because neurexin and neuroligin they interact so here the, this domain they interact with this domain and similarly the neuroligin has a neurexin binding domain so this domain they interact together uh, to form a you know during the formation of initial contact between the synapse okay so neurexin and neuroligin binding domain this is the neurex neurexin binding domain so this is the structure of neuroligin and this is the structure of neurexin this is a neuroligin binding domain okay and both have pdz uh, domain okay so here showing uh, how you know neurexin and neuroligin uh, important for the synapse formation so this is the neurexin so this is the um, cytoplasmic domain this is the transmembrane domain this is the extracellular domain the cytoplasmic domain uh, binding to the cast elks or drp in drosophila and uh, um, regulates the you know uh, you know proper functioning of the release machinery in the postsynaptic cell you have the neuroligin and this is this is the interaction domain for you know neuro neuroxin and neuroligins and in the cytoplasmic domain it binds to you know you know pdz containing protein or psd 95 protein containing protein which regulate you know you know clustering of this um, nmda type glutamate receptor okay so neuroligins there are four family members of neuroligins uh, in the postsynaptic dendrites you have neuroligin 1 neuroligin 2 um uh, so mostly the neuroligin 1 present in the excitatory synapse like uh, nmda or ampa receptor containing uh, excitatory synapse the neuroligin 2 uh, present in the inhibitory synapse uh, mostly the gabagic or glycine type uh, inhibitory synapse okay so here uh, showing that how this cell adhesion molecules or the inductive molecules can in can uh, actually uh, can form the synapse. So here, uh, this is uh, experiment uh, just to in vitro experiment to say that uh, uh, you can artificially actually um, you can artificially um, do the assay for the synapse. Uh, so that is artificial synapse assay to find the, what are the synaptic synaptogenic molecules required for the formation of synapse. So you can artificially induce synapse formation. So here. Um, the, they have taken two different uh, cell type here this is the primary neuronal culture hippocampal culture so and this they, they have taken other cells like cos 7 cells or hec 293 cells they are non neuronal cells okay non neuronal cell lines when you they over express neuroligin uh, the inductive molecules okay in this hec 293 cells or cos 7 cells okay you can see that the neuron is the presynaptic neuron is forming contact to the non neuronal cells okay so that means you have uh, presynaptic differentiation so the synaptogenic molecules expressed in the non neuronal cells you know because you have you know you have affinity of the neuron now to the non neuronal cells that means you have you are initiating presynaptic differentiation these neurogenic molecules present in the non neuronal cells you know induces presynaptic differences on forming the contact you can form this contact you can see that the contact is formed to the between the neuronal and non neuronal cells because of expression of inductive molecules neuroligin in non neuronal cells we'll talk more about this in some of this uh, experiment they have done here what they have done is the they, they, they have they, they, they have done the experiment to state that neuroligin can induce presynaptic differences on here they have taken uh, neuronal explant uh, the hippocampal primary culture so here you can see uh, these are uh, hippocampal culture um, you know labeled with presynaptic marker synapsin so you can label this neuron by synapsin so synapsin present in the synaptic vesicle so that you can label the neuron in the po in the other cell the non neuronal cell they have taken is hec293 cells they have uh, transpected the gfp is a control and also transpected the NLG1, uh, neuroligin 1, okay, GFP neuroligin 1. So here, or the neuroligin 2 for the inhibitory synapses. So here, when they express this neuroligin 1 or neuroligin 2 in HEC293 cells, you can, in the control, they have expressed GFP. In, in the experiment, they have expressed, you know, neuroligin 1 tagged with the GFP or neuroligin 2 tagged with the GFP, 
Okay, you can see that in these cells you have formation of yellow, uh, like uh, the red and colocalizes with you know green. So you have formation of synapse. Okay, you have formation of synapse, but you do not see such synapse in the control. That means you know neuroligins, the cell adhesion molecule, uh, the inductive molecules, um, neuroligin can and induce a synapse formation, even it is non-neuronal cells. Okay, so here. Uh, uh, so they have also tested other inductive uh, molecules whether they uh, help in synapse formation. So here they have taken other inductive molecule like ephrine B1 or n cadherins or IgSF, the uh, immunoglobulin like um, celadacin molecules or agrin. So in all these combinations, you do not see such yellow like structure. That means it is specific to the it is it is specific to this uh, you know uh, neuroligin. So neuroligin form this synapse in the non-neuronal cells, but it, uh, other inductive molecule doesn't form this, you know, um, synapse. So synaptogenic, synaptogenic effect of cell-to-cell -cell contact is specific to neuroligins. That is you want to highlight, okay? Again, they have overexpressed neuroligin 1 uh, in the um, hippocampal neurons um, transpected with neuroligin 1 GAP or GAP as a control. They found that, you know, when they overexpress neuroligin 1, in the hippocampal um, culture, they found more formation of synapse. So uh, I'll just you know go very you know um, step by step. So here uh, they have trans uh, transpected uh, the hippocampal culture with the EGFP. This is a control, uh, and uh, you know they have labeled this with V glut, vesicular glutamate tra transporter. So vesicular vesicular glutamate transporter basically helps in packaging up glutamate to the synaptic vesicles because uh, they act as a transporter where the you know glutamate can enter into the vesicles. So here in the control you see very less expression of vesicular glutamate transporter, but when they overexpress neuroligin one, uh, you know you can see that you have more formation of V glut. That means you know more formation of synapse. So here you can see in the here you can see that you know they have uh, egfp in the green and uh, v glute in the red you can see that uh, the green and red the colocalize and uh, you know uh, you have uh, yellow synapse you, you have formation of yellow so that means you have more formation of the contact uh, okay similarly um they have uh, you know measure other parameter they have uh, measure uh, you know post synaptic density phd 95 expression of PhD 95 after a transfection with the neurologin 1 or EGFP, they have looked into homer protein, which is a postsynaptic protein, or uh, NR1, which is NMDA receptor subunit 1. So in all these cases, when they transpect with, uh, you know, transpect with the uh, you know, neurologin 1, you have more formation of PhD 95, you have more formation of homer, you have more formation of this, you have more receptor clusters. You know, that means you, you form the synapses. Um, you know, you increases the synapses when you overexpress the neurologin one. So neurologin one induces, you know, synapse formation. That is one to highlight. In the EGFP, the control, you do not see number of synapses. But when you overexpress, you know, neurologin one, you see more, you know, spine, more PhD ninety five puncta, more homor puncta, more, you know, um, uh, NMDA receptor subunit puncta or more v glute puncta in the presynapse. That means NLG1, NLG1, neurologin 1 increases excitatory synapse, uh, no, synapse number. Okay, it increases excitatory synapse number. That is, uh, you know, just that is why I want to highlight. Okay. So here they have done more experiment to suggest that it's not only the neurologin 1 overexpression uh, induced synapse, uh, num induced synapse number, but uh, you know uh, you require nmda receptor uh, to you know you require nmda receptor for increase uh, to increase the synapse number so nlg nlg1 overexpression induced synapse uh, in, uh, induced synapses still require uh, you know nmda receptor to increase the synapse number so here just want to show it is not only the neuroligin 1 you know, those neurologin 1 are stabilized by, you know, NMDA receptor to increase the synapse number. That is one to highlight. Okay. So it is not only the NLG1, um, this in increased synapse number that you are seeing uh, also uh, require this NMDA receptor uh, 
सौ यूनिट्स टू इंक्रीज दू नो टू मेक मोर नंबर ऑफ कॉन्टेक्ट सो हियर सो दिस विल बी मोर क्लियर इफ आई यू नो गो द एक्सपेरिमेंटल डिटेल सो हियर द इजीएपी the dendritic spine labeled with EGFP. You can see that you have more uh, dendritic. You you can see that you have dendritic spine, but when you overexpress neuroligin one EGFP, you see more synapse, uh, more dendritic spine compared to that of uh, control. Okay, here uh, again it is labeled with uh, another marker, which is uh, marker for the NMDA receptor, um, which is uh, um, um, sorry. it is not the nmda receptor so here they have labeled uh, the post synapse the dendrite with actin gap and the pre synapse um they have this synapsin so you know you can see that um uh, no sorry sorry i i am sorry so so here what they have done so here they have this egfp in the post synaptic dendrite and uh, the green, the red that you are seeing is the nmda receptor okay so in the control you have less nmda receptor but when they over express neuroligin 1 uh, you see more uh, dendritic spine which is in the green along with you see more the uh, you know more red puncta and also you see yellow puncta um, because the green and red they colocalize so you have more formation of you know you have more formation of the nmda receptor in the red okay so but so that that is how the synapse is formed so when you express neuroligin 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 one it induces uh, more for formation of synaptic density and uh, you have more uh, synapse formation so uh, here the uh, red that you are seeing is uh, you know the the labeled this um nmda receptor okay uh with this antibody so that's why you are seeing red puncta here so you you see the more colocalization of uh, red and green so you have more synapse formed here when they have overexpress you know neuroligin 1 but you do not see such yellow yellow like stuff and uh, things here you have less formation of this synapse okay but you can block you can block the uh, you know nmda receptor by using a you know by using a blocker for nmda receptor which is ap5 okay so ap5 basically block the nmda receptor it act as nmda nmda receptor antagonist so here what they have done you have the transpected egfp and and uh, you know block this nmda receptor by ap5 and you can you do not you do not see such yellow apposition here yellow like things here okay so here this is the control and this is the experiment so here they have what they have done is they have used this uh, um, neuroligin 1 egfp and they block this nmda receptor by using ap5 compared to that of control where they have not blocked uh, nmda receptor you can see that you have less formation of yellow like puncta i know green and uh, green and red they they are uh, when they are opposed together they become yellow so here in the control you see more yellow and here in this experiment when they block an nmda receptor with ap5 they see less yellow that means there is less formation of the uh, you know contact like there is less formation of the synapse so when the green and the postsynaptic dendrite and uh, and the presynaptic cell comes in contact they form a synapse so you know you have neuroligin um, present in the postsynaptic dendrite and also you have the nmda receptor in the postsynaptic den postsynaptic dendrite so here you can see you know they have less formation of this uh, puncta that means uh, you, you know less formation of this contact that means you know this nmda receptor also important in stabilizing the synapses okay along with uh, you know neuroligin 1 um, you require nmda receptor for making a stable functional synapse that is want to highlight here when they block this nmda receptor with ap5 you do not see such yellow things here so this is uh, more clear in the quantification here this is the um, they have looked into spine density they have looked into synapse density by uh, doing the synapsin staining okay so here uh, um, what they have done is uh, what they have done is so uh, so here uh, just want to say certain thing i think i said something wrong here 
um, the um, the proper thing will be uh, they have labeled this uh, you know just I, I apologize for that and uh, so they label the postsynaptic density or the sorry the level the postsynaptic dendrite uh, using this actin GFP so uh, the dendritic spine and the presynaptic uh, cell they labeled with synapsin the you know the red thing that you are seeing is not the glutamate uh, NMDA receptor it is the synapsin staining the presynaptic staining so when the presynapse and postsynapse they come together they become yellow you know they contact together they become yellow so the yellow, the yellow thing is that you are seeing here is the contact between presynapse and postsynapse okay so here you have more uh, localization or more uh, apposition pre and postsynapse that's why you're seeing more yellow things but when they block this nmda receptor by using ap5 you do not see such yellow thing here you have reduction in the yellow um, you know localization of pre and postsynapse like apposition of pre and postsynapse okay because and want to because they are highlighting that nmda receptor along with the neuroligin induces synapse formation that is what they want to say so here they have uh, you know measure the spine density dendritic spine density or synapse density and uh, by using by doing the synapsis synapsin staining so spine density by looking the egfp uh, and so egfp because uh, they are in the postsynaptic dendrite so here without ap5 ap5 minus with ap5 uh, plus so here this is a this is a blocker for the nmda receptor so here uh, without ap5 you can see that you have increase in spine density and uh, with ap5 you have decrease in spine density which this is in egap control so you do not see such significant because egap doesn't induce uh, synapse formation because this there is no neurologin in, in egap but when you were expressed in a, in a neurologin tagged with egap you can see that when you do not have ap5 ap5 minus you have more spine density but when you add ap5 to this neurologin one over expressing cells you, you can see that you reduce the spine density that means ap5 blocking nmda re receptor reduces the spine density similarly here they have measured the synapse den density by using the synapsin standing which is in red that you are seeing so in the control without ap5 um, you have some um, synapsin uh, standing and, and uh, Synapsin staining colocalizes with you know opposed to the green uh, postsynaptic uh, um, uh, actin. So uh, this, uh, this is the you know the dendrite is labeled with uh, actin GFP. So but when uh, you know the incubate or the ap 5 you can see that you have reduction in spine you know synapse density. Similarly, so the you know in the control you do not see such much such uh, spine den you know synapse density. But when you overexpress neurologin 1, EGAP tag neurologin 1. In the absence of AP5, you see in the synapsin staining there, you have more yellow staining, you know, synapse density is more. But when you add AP5, which blocks NMDA receptor, you reduce the synapse density. Okay. So here, just want to highlight that in the mature synapse, okay, you have interaction between neurologin and neurologin, and, and also you have a clustering of this, you know, NMDA receptor, which you know helps in forming the proper mature synapse so mature synapse has uh, uh, the interaction between neuro neurexin uh, in the presynapse and neurolegin in the postsynapse along with clustering of receptor um, the ampa receptor or an nmd type receptor is important for uh, uh, important for formation of a mature synapse and um, just want to show some more important thing um for synaptogenesis not only the neuroligin, neurexin, um, or cadherins, um, cell adhesion molecules, but also the astrocyte can promote synaptogenesis. So here, uh, the presynaptic cell membrane tagged with, uh, you know, labeled with synaptotagmin. Synaptotagmin is a vesicle associated protein. So here you can see, and uh, here you can see that uh, you have less spines for synaptic density, but who, uh, this is with no glia, no astrocyte. The neuron is cultured with no astrocyte, but when you cultured with glia astrocyte, you can see that you have more synapse, you know, postsynaptic density. That means it induces the and in the colocalization, you can see that you have more formation of yellow. That means you have presynapse and postsynapse. You have uh, formation of this, uh, you know, uh, contact. Uh, here, similarly showing that uh, when you add glia, you see more yellow localization compared to that of uh, no glia. So you increases the, you know. Um, synapse 
um, no, you know, density when you um, cultured with glia. That means the astrocyte or glia promotes synaptogenesis. So then how astrocyte promotes synaptogenesis? The next question arises. Basically, it has been shown that astrocyte produce thrombospondin, an extracellular matrix component, and that mediates synaptogenesis. Basically, uh, here uh, the experiment uh, shown in either in the earlier stage of this um, development or later stage of the development. So this is postnatal eight, it's in the wild type. Uh, when you have intact thrombospondin, you have uh, more synapse formation. When you knock out the thrombospondin, uh, you have less synapse formation. Uh, so thrombospondin knockout mouse, um, when you deleted the genes. Uh, the TSP1 or TSP gene, uh, which produces thrombospondin and an extracellular matrix component, uh, we, you know, we can see that you have fewer synapse number. That means astrocytes promote promotes astrocyte promotes synaptogenesis um, through formation of thrombospondin, which is extracellular matrix protein, and that is required for the synaptogenesis. It seems to be from this experiment. Okay, so if I highlight uh, what I have discussed today. I can say that uh, there are various uh, molecules that is important for uh, synapse formation. You have expression of catherines, um, cell adhesion molecule. Uh, you have expression of uh, neurexin um, in the presynaptic um, compartment. You have uh, expression of neuroligins. Along with you have uh, you know the glia derived um, derived neurotrophic factor, which is thrombospondin, playing an important role uh, in the synaptogenesis. Okay, um, so um, also there are some other important molecules that I, I have not highlighted. The secreted molecules like FGF22 or Wnt7A can also promote uh, exon branching and presynaptic clustering. Okay, so if I highlight what I have discussed today. I have um, no. I can say that uh, you know, catherine plays an important role in uh, synapse formation, mostly, and the homophilic interaction between catherine, catherine is important for synapse formation. Then uh, neurexin neurologic interaction is also important for synapse formation. Here uh, I have shown that uh, um, in from the previous slide, the neurexin neurologic combination, well, mostly the neurologic in the combination with the NMDA receptor helps in. Um, and synapse formation because uh, you require NMDA receptor along with the neuroligin to make a proper synapse, mature synapse. So here, uh, this is a uh, two types of synapse, uh, uh, mature synapse um, found in uh, CNS. One is type one synapse and then the type two synapse. Um, the difference between type one and type two synapse is they both are asymmetric, which is um, um, uh, which is fine, but they differ in their uh, uh, molecular structure. So here. Uh, Type 1 synapses are mostly general, generally, you know, mostly excitatory and type 2 synapses, they are mostly inhibitory like uh, gabargic type or glycine type. And uh, the type 1 synapse contains spherical synaptic vesicles. So here you can see that the synaptic vesicles present in the type 1 excitatory synapses are spherical, but uh, they are present in, uh, you know, in the gray, you know, in type 2 synapses, they are mostly flattened. You can see that it's not spherical, they are mostly flattened. So uh, this is all about synaptogenesis. Um, and thank you for attending the class. So if you have any question, you can write to um, write to me through email, or you can we can meet in the office hour, or we can do Zoom uh, if you have any doubts. Uh, thank you for attention. I am happy to take any questions. Any questions? Okay. I'll see you I I I'll see you all in the next class.